Okay, in this video, there are two main verses I want to focus on in Matthew 24. Okay, and this is um, going to be all related to a conversation I had with this guy. And I just want to share the contrast between the believer and the unbeliever. Okay, so uh, real quickly, John 3.16, the, the title of the video is John 3.16 does not support faith alone and eternal security. Obe obey Jesus or go to hell. And what's that mean to obey Jesus? Um, and so, first of all, <laughs> it, to me it's so ridiculous that you would make such a statement like that. First of all, all right, just first of all, we got to establish John 3, 16, probably the most popular verse in the world. Okay, and um, so I'll blow this up so maybe you can see it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You can't have everlasting life and lose it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be everlasting life. So, I mean, this is willful ignorance. However, okay, now that, that aside, let's. I want to focus on the, the conversation that we had. If you know me, I try to be nice and all that good stuff. And he talks about... Loving your neighbor would violate the law or something. That's something ridiculous. But anyways, it, it just like typical conversations, they go all kinds of different directions. And then so we get to this point where he's talking about enduring to the end. And I simply say that enduring to the end is not a means of salvation. Otherwise, Christ died in vain. Well, he says, John, or I'm sorry, Matthew 24, verses 3 and 4. Um, and Jesus sat on um, upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall these things be? When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? All right, so... If you want to know Bible prophecy right there, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, that, that's your go-to right there. That'll just give you the idea of Bible prophecy, in time Bible prophecy, better than anywhere in the entire Bible. Because it comes directly from the Lord Jesus, and he makes it as simple as possible. Alright, and so in verse 24, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed. I like the arrows. I, I, I do that from time to time, too. Take heed that no man deceive you. Will those who are deceived enter into the kingdom of God? Surely not, he says. So, this is as, as about a ridiculous statement as I've ever heard in my entire life. So, if you're deceived in any way, you're not going to the kingdom of God. So, now, not only can you never sin... You can't even be, be deceived one little bit. You got to be perfect and know everything about everything. Otherwise, you're not going into the kingdom. Well, that were true. That would be true if it were not for the blood of Jesus Christ, which washes away all of our sins. Okay. Not just the past sins, but all sins for all time. All right, so I wanted to just point this out that being deceived is not, you know, you're not going to lose your salvation if you're wrong about something. If somebody made you believe that um, there's coming this, um, you know, for example, a lot of people teach that there's a thousand year period that Jesus Christ is going to reign after he comes as if he's not reigning now and as if he's going to reign for a thousand years and then he's done reigning. All right. So they can't explain it because it makes no sense. Right. 
But just even if you are deceived about that, or if you're deceived about not realizing the Pope is the Antichrist, the fourth beast of Daniel, the beast of Revelation, if you're not if you're deceived about that, it doesn't mean you're going to lose your salvation. Being deceived, you're not going to once you become born of the Spirit of God, you're not going to know all things. You're going to be you're still going to be a dummy, just like you were ten minutes before you were saved. Ten minutes after you're saved, you're still a dummy, but you have the Spirit of God in you, and you have access to the Spirit of Truth, and the truth will guide you uh, toward all things that you wish to know. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open. right? Ask, and thou shalt receive. All right, so that's 20. I just wanted to focus on that, Matthew 24. Verse 4, take heed that no man deceive you. And then uh, there's another verse I want to talk about that is a little bit not as crazy, okay? But these guys are wrong, okay? And I, I, to me, that was when it was time to, you know, shut down the conversation. It had gone on long enough. But just to show you, I mean, it's like you take any verse in the Bible, and these guys will misinterpret it, no matter what it is. The very simplest thing. It's unbelievable, really. All right, so uh, it's regarding Matthew 24. Oh, goodness. i got to think of the conversation now. Oh, well, it was five. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was the very next verse. Okay. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So that's Matthew 24, uh, verse 5. And if we go to Mark 13, verse 6. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And then we go to Luke 21. And verse 8, and he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. All right, so if we go back up to Matthew 24, of course, verse 5, right after Jesus says, Take heed that no man deceive you. He says, For many shall come in my name, saying, That means, Many will come in the name of Jesus, saying that Jesus is Christ, and shall deceive many. Very simple. Right? And we see that happening today. Jesus foretold this was going to happen, and it's happening. <laughs> and Jesus has simply given us a warning that there's going to be all kinds of deceptions, and there's gonna, it's just going to get worse and worse until the end. All right, and he just lays out everything that's going to be happening. And when you see all these things happening, know that the end is near, even at the doorstep, right? And, of course, when you see the Lord Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven, you know it is over, right? Well, anyways, so these guys, I'll take Matthew 24, verse 5. And they don't, they're saying, basically, where are we at here? This guy writes a book every time. That's another reason why. All right, so he's talking about, uh, according to you people who are saying Jesus is Christ are trying to deceive many. According to you, people who are saying Jesus is Christ are trying to deceive many. Are you sure you want to stick to this interpretation? Well, that's what the clear clear text the clear verse says that's the word of god that's what it says and not just matthew 24 there should be no mistaken about it so what these guys want to say is both turn and burn and watchmen they want to say this is not talking about uh, people saying jesus is christ there are going to be many people who are going to say that they are christ <laughs> uh, what do you what do you guess like uh, half a billion people 
a billion. I mean, throughout all time, not just today, but throughout the last thousand, two thousand years, maybe billions of people have come and said, "I am." They they are Christ, right? Is that is that where you, is that the position you want to take? That many means a lot. It always means a lot. That's not what this is saying at all. Okay. And so they want to equate that verse, verse 5, with verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So there's going to be billions of people claiming to be Christ. And they're going to, this is so ridiculous. This is not that many people. Okay, compared to what we read in verse 5. False Christ in this context is talking about popes and false teachers. All right, false prophets is talking about the Catholic Church. All right, and we read more about that in the book of Revelation. All right, to put it very bluntly, to put it very simply, that's what this verse is talking about. And he's not doubling up on his. You know, he's not going back and repeating himself. Okay, he's not chewing his cabbage twice here. All right, this is, this is uh, simply a lot of people claiming to be Christians and shall deceive many. And we, I mean, it's so, so obvious that we see a lot of this today, and I argue more so now than ever before. All right, so I think that's, that's all I wanted to share. Uh, just to give some clarification here that you, if you if you're deceived about something you're not going to lose your salvation but i would encourage everybody to always seek the truth and to humble yourself and and um, you know put the truth before your own self it's because worldviews are very hard to change and if your worldview about a particular thing is wrong don't you want to be right? And so you have to, even the strongest things, the hardest things, you have to be willing to uh, accept the possibility that you might be wrong, right? And the truth will stand throughout all time. So if you put all your trust in the truth, you've got nothing to worry about, right? So again, don't worry about losing your salvation if you if you um, if you're deceived or if you accidentally sin or you willfully sin or whatever you can't lose your salvation you're a new man you're a new creature when you are born of the spirit of god and you shall never die all right that's it